Hello, this is Dr. Brooke Patterson, and I'm here to talk to you today about the musculoskeletal system. The musculoskeletal system consists of bones, joints, and muscles. The system is needed to support and stand movement and to encase and protect our vital organs. Red blood cells are also produced in the bone marrow, and our bones serve as a reservoir for essential minerals. Bones and cartilage are just special forms of connective tissue. Joints are places of union of two or more bones. Ligaments are fibrous bands that connect one bone to another. Bursa are enclosed fluid-filled sacs that serve as cushions. Voluntarily controlled, muscles connect tendons to bones. I wanted to show you some important landmarks of the spine. Notice the positions of the cervical spine, scapula, thoracic spine, lumbar spine, and the sacral area. During inspection, spinal curvature can be best seen when the person touches their toes. The spine should be straight and the concave lumbar curve should disappear when touching the toes. The following slides are a view of the anatomy of specific joints we will be discussing in class. This slide shows the different components of the shoulder joint. We will also be talking about the wrist and hand. Please notice the, difference, the different joints and where they are located because you will learn later that they are related to certain conditions. This slide shows the landmarks of the knee. Note the locations of the patella, meniscus, and bursa. We will also be talking about the synovial joint and how it relates to the range of motion. Skeletal muscles can produce an abundance of different movements. Familiarize yourselves with flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, pronation, supination, and circumduction. There is also inversion and eversion mostly referring to the ankle. Rotation mostly refers to the head. Also be familiar with protraction, retraction, elevation, and depression. This is a nice diagram that demonstrates some of the movements we just talked about. We will also practice these in labs. As far as subjective data goes, we need to think about joints, muscles, and bones. Asking questions about pain, stiffness, swelling, warmth, redness, or limited movement are important questions to ask regarding joints. In regard to muscles, you may want to ask if the patient is experiencing any cramping or weakness. Questions regarding bones will most, mostly include any pain or deformities or trauma. For all systems, you will want to ask about their ability to complete ADLs. It is important to make sure your assessments and questions are patient-centered, keeping sensitive and cultural information in mind. When thinking about additional history questions, we need to think about the developmental stages. For infants and children, questions about labor and delivery information, such as if they had a traumatic delivery, the history of broken bones or deformities, and achievement of developmental milestones. For adolescents, it is important to obtain information related to sports activities or any injuries associated with sports. For the aging adult, it is important to think about self-care and safety. Have they had new onset weakness? Is it unilateral or generalized? Have they noticed an increase in falls or loss of balance? Do they use a mobility device such as a walker or wheelchair. For health promotion, it is also necessary to recommend female patients 65 and older for DEXA screening or bone density testing. The general order for assessing the musculoskeletal system includes inspection, palpation, range of motion, and muscle testing. While inspecting, you will notice the size and contour of the joints as well as the skin color and characteristics. You will then palpate the skin, muscles, bony areas, and joint capsules if applicable. You will then test the patient's range of motion. There are two types of range of motion, 
There is active range of motion, which is what the patient can perform by themselves. And there is passive range of motion where you as the examiner will assist in moving the extremity. For muscle testing, you will test the strength of the prime muscle groups for each joint. You will then ask the person to flex and hold as you apply an opposing force. Muscle strength should be equal bilaterally and should fully resist the opposing force. You will use a standard grading scale from zero to five. There are different types of testing available when you suspect an abnormality exists. For carpal tunnel syndrome, there is the Phelan test and the Tunnell sign test. Also be familiar with the McMurray test for meniscal tears. Straight leg testing is an important test to remember. It may help determine the presence of a herniated nucleus pulposus or herniated disc. The patient will keep a straight leg raised while keeping the knee extended normally. This usually does not produce pain. If the patient raises the affected leg and dorsiflexes the foot and pain is produced, the test is positive. This slide is a representation of the straight leg test. It is important to know different developmental spinal abnormalities. Kyphosis is common during adolescent years because of chronic poor posture. Adolescence is an appropriate time to screen for scoliosis with the forward bend test or dive position. You will expect a straight vertical spine. Postural changes in pregnancy include lordosis. Due to postural changes, including a decrease in height, kyphosis is common in the aging adult. With the aging adult, also know that there will be a decrease in body fat and body bony prominences become more apparent, making the elderly population more prone to pressure ulcers and injuries. These changes also affect the ability to perform essential activities of daily living. I want you to know the difference between inflammatory and degenerative conditions. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic inflammatory condition with mostly symmetrical bilateral joint involvement. Symptoms may also include heat, redness, and edema. Rheumatoid arthritis mostly affects the PIP joints. Ankylosing spondylitis is the inflammation of vertebrae that may lead to bony fusion of the joints. It may affect the spine, pelvis, and thoracic cage. It is characterized by a dull, deep pain in the low back or buttocks. Degenerative conditions include osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease and osteoporosis. Osteoarthritis is a progressive disorder involving the deterioration of cartilage causing bone remodeling. Asymmetric joints are usually involved. It produces hard, non-tender nodules of the DIP joints or Herberton nodes and PIP joints, Bouchard nodes. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the location of these joints. Osteoporosis is a decrease in skeletal muscle mass leading to low bone mineral density causing a higher risk for fractures. It is important to understand common pathologies of the wrist and hand, knee, and ankle and foot. Abnormalities of the wrist and hand may include a ganglion cyst, which is a round cystic non-tender nodule overlying a tendon sheath or joint capsule, usually on the dorsum of the wrist. A Culley's fracture is a non-articular fracture of the distal radius that usually occurs during a fall with an outstretched hand. Carpal tunnel syndrome refers to pain or numbness and tingling along the thumb and index and middle fingers caused by compression of the medial nerve. It is mostly caused by a chronic repetitive motion. The patient will likely have a positive Phelan test and Tennell sign. Osgood's slatter disease is a painful swelling of the tibial tubercle just below the knee from overuse. It occurs mostly in puberty during rapid growth before the closure of the growth plate. Prepatellar bursitis refers to localized swelling of the anterior knee between the patella and the skin. Acute gout is a painful inflammatory arthritis characterized by excess uric acid in the blood leading to deposits of urate crystals in the joint space. Episodes are characterized by redness, swelling, heat, and extreme pain. Tophi with chronic gout are hard nodules that most often occur 
in the metatarsophalangeal joint of the first toe. Tophi are collections of urate crystals.